All right, this is one of my other very favorite lectures in this whole thing because I think this is super fun. And um, so what we're gonna talk about in this lecture is how to do an iterative sensitivity analysis for a stage frequency curve. Um, we're gonna talk about various inputs and analyses within RFA, and we're gonna define the nature of a sensitivity analysis for a project. We're gonna explain why we perform sensitivity analysis and provide some examples. Keep in mind that these are examples and each project is unique. So you're gonna to need to use and exercise engineering judgment to figure out what is appropriate for your project. Sensitivity analysis is conducted to develop an understanding of the range of uncertainty in our results due to certain key inputs. It's vital to conduct sensitivity analysis in a one at a time manner which means that we only vary one variable per simulation. So we're, gonna, we're not gonna change several things at a time, we're just gonna change one thing at a time. There are two main types of parameters on which we perform sensitivity analysis. We wanna test parameters that have a lot of uncertainty, and we wanna test parameters that have a lot of leverage on our answer. Whether we have parameters with a lot of uncertainty or a lot of leverage on our answer or both, sensitivity analysis can help us determine whether it's worth spending additional money on further study to reduce our uncertainty. This presentation will provide examples of iterative sensitivity analysis for an RMC RFA project using critical duration, inflow hydrograph shapes, flow frequency inputs, seasonality, and reservoir starting stage. Engineering judgment should be exercised to determine which of these should be performed. So you may not run all of these every single time, um, but these are some of the options. In your documentation, it can be really helpful to organize the results of the sensitivity analysis into categories that are ranked by their impact on the risk of overtopping. In other words, the results can be organized based on the difference in annual exceedance probability, or AEP. Um, or you can also look at the intersection with the top of dam, um, if that makes more sense to do for your project. On the right is an example of a table of contents for the sensitivity analysis section in an issue evaluation study, um, a hydrologic loading curve report. Three categories of risk impacts can be identified, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary risk impacts are those that have the potential to alter the probability of overtopping by an order of magnitude or greater. Secondary risk impacts have the potential to alter the probability of overtopping by approximately half an order of magnitude to a whole order of magnitude. And then tertiary risk impacts have the potential to alter the probability of overtopping by less than half an order of magnitude. If you categorize risk impacts this way, it can also help to determine the parameters that could benefit from additional study to reduce uncertainty. Our first example of sensitivity analysis is critical duration. What if we have multiple driving storm mechanisms for a project? These two hydrographs represent two types of extreme storm mechanisms within the same watershed that occur during different seasons of the year, spring and summer. Typically, we see rainfall storm mechanisms having critical durations on the order of days to a week. For rain on snow mechanisms, we often see critical durations that are weeks to a month or multiple months. This particular basin is very large, which extends the critical duration. Look at the example to see if you can identify which critical duration would be most likely to correspond to the driving mechanism of extreme floods for this watershed. So let's go ahead and, and share what you think. Do you think that A is a rainfall-driven extreme storm or a rain-on-snow event? What do you think? As a critical duration of 27 days. I've got a variety of answers. So this particular one is, uh, that 27-day one is the rainfall-only events for this particular basin. It's a very large basin. And then the letter B is the rain on snow events um, that are the much longer, I'm sorry, I said that backwards. <laughs> Let me try that again. So the rain on snow is the early spring, those ones that are happening earlier in the year, and they have a shorter critical duration. And then the longer ones are those rainfall events that are happening. And the basin is so large that it takes months for the water to get down to the actual dam. So um, 
that's pretty, pretty in, intense. Um, the basic point that I want to get across here is when you have more than one driving storm mechanism in a basin, it's important to perform a sensitivity analysis on both the critical durations. Here we can see a sensitivity analysis for a different dam. The plot compares two stage frequency curves for uns with uncertainty that correspond to the critical durations associated with two seasonal storm mechanisms. In this watershed, the rainfall-driven storm had a five-day critical duration, while the rain-on-snow-driven storms had a 20-day critical duration. When we have more than one driving storm mechanism in a basin, it's important to perform sensitivity analysis on both critical durations. Okay, when we have a basin with a single driving storm mechanism, we typically see storms that are in a similar range of critical durations. This, the dam that's shown here has an average critical duration of nine days, but some of the storms were longer or shorter than nine days. To examine the fit with the observed data, the modeler may choose to perform a sensitivity analysis on the average critical duration of nine days, as well as seven days and 11 days, to ensure that they have a good fit to the observed data. Here are a couple of other examples. For both of these dams, multiple critical durations were examined. In the example on the left, the critical duration made over two orders of magnitude of difference at the dam crest. In other words, the results of this analysis are sensitive to critical duration and could be classified as having primary risk effects at the top of dam. In the example on the right, the various critical durations examined made around a half an order of magnitude of difference. So we would classify this as having secondary risk impacts for overtopping. When you're faced with varying critical durations, consider a sensitivity analysis that looks at different durations to compare the results to assess which duration makes sense in the context of the observed flood events uh, and our understanding of typical large events in the region. Evaluating the sensitivity of stage frequency curves at, local, at critical locations, such as near the largest observed events and the top of dam, can help inform your judgment on which critical duration to use for your final analysis. So that's, the, that's kind of the point here. We're doing this so that we can make a decision on which one we want to choose or which one we're going to choose as our best estimate for this basin. In the next sensitivity analysis, we'll examine inflow hydrograph shapes. When evaluating multiple critical durations, always be sure that the selected hydrograph shapes are representative of the durations being evaluated. Okay, so let me t say that in different words. So if you have a 20-day critical duration, don't include the PMF hydrograph shape that's five days because those don't match. The critical duration doesn't match with the, the, what you're trying, the hydrograph length. So you do, if you have more than one critical duration that you're going to examine, you need to make sure that your hydrograph shapes you select correspond to that critical duration. If your project has limited data for an observed hydrograph or has never seen a significant flood event, consider including synthetic hydrograph shapes, such as a probable maximum flood hydrograph, to account for the hydrograph shapes that might occur during an extreme flood. When performing sensitivity analysis on inflow hydrographs, you'll want to run an expected only simulation in an RMC RFA, selecting one hydrograph at a time. So in this example that's pictured, the inflow hydrograph shape, um, so let me just show you what's going on there. So there were, I think, let's see, I think there were three hydrograph shapes. So we looked at each one individually. So we said for hydrograph number one, we gave it a weight of one, and we did not include any of the other hydrograph shapes. And then we looked at the second hydrograph, and we said that had a weight of one, and we did not include any of the other hydrograph shapes in the simulation. So we did that for all three, and then we combined them and looked at what they look like all together. You could also do, um, like if you had five or something like that, you could do a sensitivity where you said, okay, what if I include these four, but what if I include all five of them? How does that impact my answer? Um, so you can kind of try some different things depending on what your scenario is. Um, but in this case, um, you can see that the, the hydrograph shape had less than a half an order of magnitude of difference at the top of dam. So we could classify this as having, having tertiary risk impacts. Um, what should you do if the stage frequency results are sensitive to the hydrograph shape that you selected? In other words, what, what, if, what if there's an order of magnitude of difference? 
depending on what you decide to use for your hydrograph shapes. What, what, what did you do? What's that? Keep doing, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. So, so you'd want to take, examine those hydrograph shapes a little bit more closely and then look at the, decide which ones are more critical for your basin. Yep. So perhaps, uh, perhaps you were using a hydrograph shape that was for a medium sized flood and not a large flood as one of your options. And maybe that's actually making kind of a big difference because that shape isn't characteristic of a large flood in your basin, perhaps. Maybe it's overestimating the volume because of its wide shape or something like that. So those are some good things to examine if you are seeing that it's sensitive. Um, and I also mentioned this several times before, but I'll say it again. Ensure that the length of the hydrograph matches your critical duration. If they're too long, the volume may be overestimated when the hydrographs are scaled. And you want to ensure that the hydrograph is representative of the driving storm mechanism in the basin. There's multiple inputs to vary in the development of a volume frequency curve. So all the way back to our best fit model um, that could impact the resulting stage frequency curve. Some of those items are SKU, ERL, historic storm inclusion, and the use of perception thresholds. Effective record length and SKU parameters are probably the two most important inputs for your volume frequency curve. SKU affects the tail of the distribution at the rare AEPs, and the effective record length affects the mean hazard curve. Since these inputs also tend to be uncertain, it's a good practice to evaluate the sensitivity of these results um, to the inputs. So in this example, we're gonna look at skew. Skew often has a large impact on the volume frequency curves and thus a large impact on the stage frequency curves. Skew affects the tail of the distribution at the rare AEPs. Since skew tends to be uncertain, it's a good practice to evaluate the sensitivity of the results to these inputs. In this sensitivity analysis example, the range of skew values possible at the project produced results with more than an order of magnitude of difference. The differences in skew were due to varying the inclusion of inflow data and inclusion of regional skew data in the flow frequency analysis. Because there is greater than an order of magnitude difference at the top of dam, we would classify this as having primary risk effects for the dam. Another volume frequency curve input is effective record length. Effective record length affects the mean hazard curve. In the sensitivity analysis example, the range of effective record length values were varied to estimate the impact of performing additional study, such as paleo flood analysis, which can greatly increase the effective record length for a flow frequency analysis. So for this example, we just put in 500 years and 1,000 years of an ERL just to see how that would impact our analysis. Um, and to determine whether performing paleo analysis was likely to have an appreciable effect on the results. The results show that extending the record length could affect the risk of overtopping by over an order or by about an order of magnitude or greater. And since there is greater than an order of magnitude of difference at top of dam, we would classify this as having primary risk effects. The results of this sensitivity indicate that for this dam, it could be beneficial to perform paleo flood analysis to help reduce uncertainty at rare uh, frequencies. The volume frequency curve parameters can be sensitive to the choices we make in our best fit frequency analysis. How we select our perception thresholds and estimate flow intervals for historical floods can impact the shape of our inflow volume frequency curve. Sensitivities on this information can be developed and run with an RMC RFA to evaluate how sensitive the stage frequency curve is to these flow frequency inputs. So in the picture you can see that we've included just the systematic data versus including one historic flood with a perception threshold versus including two historic floods with perception thresholds. In this example, five volume frequency curves were developed using different assumptions for historic flood flow intervals and perception thresholds. The results are greater than an order of magnitude of spread at the top of dam. So this volume frequency curve parameter sensitivity indicates that we have primary Im risk impacts for this dam. In some cases, you will want to evaluate sensitivity in flood seasonality. 
If the monthly stage duration curves vary significantly, then consider ch uh, checking the sensitivity to the flood seasonality. If not, then seasonality and stage duration probably won't be impactful. In this example, a sensitivity analysis was performed between the seasonality based on inflow records and the seasonality based on the stage records. For this dam, the difference was almost imperceptible at the top of dam, indicating that this parameter has tertiary risk impacts. Starting stage is another sensitivity that can be performed. To test the stage frequency sensitivity to starting stage, you can create some stage data sets that include the same stage for every day. So that's what I was talking about earlier, creating a dummy data set, and then running a starting stage duration analysis on that data set. In the example on the left, two starting stages were compared um, with a typical starting stage duration model that's already in RFA. One data set included a starting stage corresponding to the spillway crest, and the other data set included starting stages corresponding to the top of flood contro control pool. For this example, the dam was sensitive to starting stage at, as the risk impacts were approximately in order of magnitude. The example on the right performed the same sensitivity analysis comparing two starting stages. The resulting stage frequency curves had imperceptible differences at the top of dam and therefore could be categorized as having a tertiary risk effects. So as I mentioned earlier, starting stage can be really sensitive for some dams and others not at all. Another very impactful sensitivity analysis to perform is on the RMC RFA reservoir model. On the left, we see an example where two reservoir models were compared and they show very little difference at the top of dam. So we would classify that as tertiary risk impacts for this dam, since the difference is less than half an order of magnitude. In the figure on the right, there was a significant difference at elevations near the observed stage data, but near the top of dam, there was less than half an order of magnitude. And these sensitivity results show that tertiary risk impacts are there at the top of dam since they're less than a half an order of magnitude. So that's something that you'll want to consider if you're doing a risk analysis. So if, you, if a particular dam has um, a failure mode at a spillway level, um, this may be something that is impactful. Um, a lot of times when we're, a lot of times we think about overtopping as a hydrologic um, potential risk failure mode, but, um, but spillway ones can come into play as well. And so you may be looking at two different kind of ranges of stages um, when you're thinking about risk. 